Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas, and this is another video on my series on Azure Integration Services and Hybrid Options. In this video, we're starting a new module all about the Azure Service Bus. Now, I've broken this up into several smaller videos, so you can pick and choose what you would like to learn about. If you're new to the Azure Service Bus, this is a great place to start. Let's jump into what the Azure Service Bus is. First and foremost, it's the queue we've been waiting for. If there's one thing that's consistent in my over 24 years of working with integration solutions, is almost every integration solution seems to have a queue. Long ago, IBM MQ was the golden standard for enterprise queuing. Almost every client I worked with used IBM MQ. The big drawback of IBM MQ was of course the cost. It came at a pretty extensive price. Given the price of IBM MQ, sometimes the customer would build their own queuing infrastructure using SQL tables. This is a solution I've used many a times for smaller integration solutions, and this worked pretty well. With Azure, there's a new option that we have available to us. There's an enterprise grade, low cost option, and that is called Azure Service Bus. Now keep in mind that Azure Service Bus might not be the best option when dealing with low latency scenarios and synchronous solutions. Let's give a quick overview of the Azure Service Bus. First and foremost, the Azure Service Bus is a message-based, reliable messaging platform built in the cloud on Azure. It supports many common features that we would come to expect with a queuing infrastructure. This includes first-in, first-out support, duplicate message detection, basic publish and subscribe features by using topics, dead letter support, and peak lock support. Now, many of these features we're gonna dive into more detail in later modules, but for now, just keep in mind that all these features are available for you inside the Azure Service Bus. Now, you do have a message size limit. The message size limit is 256K. If you need larger payloads than this, you could look at using a claim check pattern. This is an approach where you would write the payload of the message to generally Azure storage, and then pass a reference to that message around the Azure service bus. This is a common approach that I've seen in Azure integration services and something I've implemented several times in the past, and this tends to work very well. Now you can get larger message support up to 100 megs if you're using the premium tier. Now with that said, let's take a quick look at our pricing options and what different tier levels we have for our Azure Service Bus. There's three different tier levels, basic, standard, and premium. With basic, it's something I've never actually implemented because it is quite in fact so basic. A standard edition comes at a hefty price of, wow, $10 a month. And if you need the premium features, which gives you zone redundancy and that larger message support, you're going to be looking at more around $700 a month. With that said, the vast majority of my clients do go with the standard edition implementation of Service Bus, and this runs you around 35 cents a day. If you look at other services inside of Azure, I feel 35 cents a day, the Azure Service Bus has to be one of the best values out there today. With this, you do get your queue support, obviously, as well as topics, which is gonna add that pub sub functionality inside of your service bus. And we'll take a look at how to use that in our solutions in a later module, and it could come in very handy. So like I said, most clients do end up uh, going with this uh, $10 approach. So with that, we've seen just a high level overview of kind of what the Azure Service Bus is. Let's jump right in and create a service bus namespace and go ahead and create our first service bus queue. Okay, I've now jumped into my Azure portal. I've already logged in. I've jumped to my live demo dashboard. And let's go ahead and jump into my resource group and see how we can create a new service bus namespace. We go up here to create. And I'm going to select service bus. And come down here to create. and give it a name, live demo and the date. I'm gonna create it in East US. And here you can select your pricing tier. If you'd like more information on the pricing tiers, you could click the browse available plans and their features. But I know I'm gonna jump into the standard edition service bus. 
At this price point, I don't see any reason to create a basic edition. I would always jump right in and create that standard edition service bus. And you'll notice a lot of other features here, such as geo replication. This is a premium only feature, so it's grayed out. You're not able to select that. Let's go over to advanced. You can select your minimum TLS version. We're going to leave that as the default. If you wanted to give this private network access and set it up on a VNet, you would have the ability to do that here. Again, this is going to be a premium only feature, so it's not going to be available for us in the standard edition. You can set your tags and you should always set your tags, such as a cost uh, center and give it some value. This will help you organize things later on. You're going to thank yourself for it and going to go ahead and review and create. And this will take it just a moment to do its validation. Then once its validation is complete, you'll see it at the top and don't forget to hit create. Now it is going to take just a few minutes for this to create. I'm going to jump away and come back once this is done. OK, now the deployment is complete. I'm going to jump to the resource by clicking this button. And here you can see my new service bus namespace that I have created. A few things we'll take a look at over here on the left side is kind of some overview information. You have your access control information here. This is to give you resource level uh, access to the service bus namespace. This is going to be at the service bus namespace level, and you can add different role assignments and add different users here as you see fit. And under settings, you have your shared access policies. This is a older way to authenticate to some of the service bus and Azure resources where you essentially have a name value pair of resource policy to access these resources. This is commonly used in like BizTalk Server, for example, when you're going to access uh, service bus queues. In general, when I try to access the service bus namespace from other Azure resources, I'm going to tend to use essentially integrated auth or role-based authentication for those resources, which uh, is uh, very beneficial and simple, simple to set up. But we do have this here. You can create new access policies if you need. And let's jump down here and see our cues and our topics. There's going to be nothing here. We're going to dive into topics in just a moment. But let's take a look at cues. If we wanted to create a new queue, we'd simply come over here and click cues. And I can give it a name. Let's call it demo 08. And you can select your queue size. It goes up to 5 gigs. And this is how much data you can store inside your queue. We'll just leave it default. You have a bunch of properties you can set here, such as max delivery count. So this is the amount of time it will try to deliver your message, such as through a peak lock uh, approach. After this amount of time, it's going to dead letter that message for you so that it doesn't keep trying. So if you get a bad message in your queue, it's not going to mess things up. And you can set a time to live for your messages. Again, it's going to dead letter your message after this time to live in your queue. And you can set a default lock duration. So if you're doing a peak lock approach, uh, which we're going to see in a later module, uh, you could set that lock duration here. And at this time, it will expire that lock to uh, allow somebody else to pick up, another worker to pick up and process that message. And here you have a bunch of features that you can choose to implement if you'd like. You have auto delete on idle queue. You have duplicate detection, which is pretty um, self-explanatory. Once you do enable that, you can set how long you want it to check back in time for duplicates. If it does find another one, it will um, not process it. We can enable dead lettering on message expiration. It'll tell you what to do with that message when it does expire. We can enable partitioning and sessions. And these are both kind of advanced features. Partitioning will allow you to extend your messaging across multiple messaging brokers. This is a property that can only be set at the time you create your queue and not something that you can edit later. So in this case, we're going to disable and turn off partitioning. Sessions allows you to essentially assign a session ID to create uh, in-order message delivery across a queue. Sessions can kind of be thought of as a queue inside of a queue, for example. So if you wanted to correlate messages based on an order ID or something like that, you could do all that inside of uh, a session uh, variable. And you have the ability to forward messages to queues and topics. So with these settings, I'm going to uncheck these two, just create a basic queue, and go ahead and click Create. Now it takes it just a moment to create this queue, and now we're going to have access to our service bus queue. You have a lot of properties here, such as message count, uh, dead letter count, max size, stuff like that. Let's jump in here. 
and take a look at this queue in more detail. You have a nice dashboard, tell you your requests and messages that you have in here, give you a great overview of this queue. One of the best features and something we're going to dive into more in our next module is the Service Bus Explorer. This allows you to jump right here in the portal and read and write messages from this queue. So if you're testing the solution, it's a great way to send a message to the queue if you would like to. And the uh, Service Bus Explorer has been around pretty much since the Service Bus uh, came out uh, many years ago. And it originally existed as a desktop tool, and that has recently been ported into the Azure portal. And we can look at under settings here. And again, we have our shared access policies. Now, this would allow us to define a shared access policy at the queue level. So if we wanted to define access to give a uh, worker the ability to read and write messages from this queue and this queue only, we could come in here and set up that shared access policy here and they would have the access to do that. Again, if you're using non-Azure clients such as BizTalk or something to access a queue, this would be very beneficial. Let's come over here to access control, very similar to what we saw before. And this allows you to define um, Azure resources and AD resources that want access to this queue, and particularly this queue, not the namespace. With that, we saw a really quick overview of how to create a service bus namespace and how to create our first queue. In subsequent modules, we'll dive into some of these other features, and we will take a look at how to read and write to these queues from Azure Logic Apps. Okay, now we saw a quick demo of working with the Azure Service Bus. If you want to learn more, of course, there's more videos in this series. You can always find the latest information at stephenwthomas.com learn. This is a quick jump to all of the information I have available to help you learn about Azure Integration Services, as well as some Pluralsight courses if you're looking to jump in and get a more deeper dive and in understanding into some of these Azure services. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe.